One of the rules that I learned growing up was to measure twice and cut once. So on this lesson, we're gonna be building off of constraints and adding dimensions. So let's get into it. So in the last lesson, we left a partially undefined sketch. We had some black lines, we had two blue lines still left in there. We did this purely by using constraints. So in this lesson, we're gonna add one more tool into your toolbox, which is dimensions. And in this whiteboard right here, we have dimensions. They're just essentially measurement rules, right? So they're just like constraints, but we're defining them by using a measurement in millimeters, inches, degrees, something like that. Again, a reminder on all these lessons and chapters as we're moving forward is that we want a fully defined black sketch, black in color on the lines uh, and circles and all that kind of stuff and not have any blue objects in there. We shouldn't be able to drag and move those objects around. So let's dive right back into Fusion here and we're gonna start looking at that same sketch that we left off of in the last lesson where we have that horizontal line uh, with a vertical and another horizontal line so again, just to reiterate, we have two lines here, both fixed horizontally, both parallel to each other. We have a perpendicular line that's fixed to the midpoint of those lines. We did all this through constraints. And we have that one line at the very bottom that is all black. So if we go up to that ribbon and we're still in that sketch tab, we can go to create and we can see down here towards the bottom is sketch dimension. We also have a quick key on ours that is set at D. You can set yours to whatever you'd like as well. So if I click on sketch dimension, and this is now a tool that we're gonna be using, it allows me to click on any object and it's gonna automatically apply a dimension that fits that object. So if I'm doing a circle, it's gonna give me a diameter or a half circle is gonna give me a radius, a line is gonna give me a linear distance, and it's gonna be following whatever rule for dimensions that you have currently in there. So if I click on here and I drag down, you can see here that 126.9 shows up and now it's it's pretty much, it's blue, right? So it's highlighted blue. I can type in anything I want here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in an even 100 and this is in millimeters. One quick way like we did last time is click escape to get out of that dimension. If you want to draw in inches instead of millimeters, it's very quick and easy. All you're gonna do is come up here to your tree, to document settings, drop down that menu, go to units and click this little piece of paper and pencil, and that'll pop up another window here. That secondary window here, we can change to inches or millimeters or centimeters, whatever you'd like. So if I switch to inches and I just click okay, you can also set this to default right now. This is gonna change automatically my dimension on my line to 3.97. Now, again, now that we have this dimension here, we can see that two things have happened. We have a black dot at the end of our line and also our vertical line has now turned black. And the reason is, is that that being set at the midpoint, we've now said that it has to be vertical and it has to be at this certain distance away from the origin. So we've defined our sketch further. One important thing is, is that you can always edit your dimensions. You can do this by just simply double clicking with the left side of your mouse and you'll see 100 millimeters pop up. That's actually what we put in before. If we change the units, it's gonna chase it. If you want, you can always put in, you can put in uh, four now that it's in inches. If you wanna continue using millimeters, you can actually type that in as well. So I can type in 150 mm and it'll do the conversion for you in here as well. It'll also do math. Um, it's something that I use really, really often. If I come in here, again, I'm gonna switch back to inches. If I do two plus two in here, it's gonna give me a measurement of four inches. So if you're trying to come up with something in the background, you don't have to go to a calculator and do that. You can actually use pretty complicated math within those dimensions. Now, we have this thing defined kind of in its length. So if I come in here, I try to grab this top line. I can't change the length of it anymore because it's set equal to the bottom one. But I can change the height of it. That's the only thing that's no longer defined in this. And sometimes 
uh, one of the best ways to figure out what is not defined is simply clicking on the blue line and trying to drag it around and see what movement is still available to you. Now that I can see that this vertical distance is not fixed, I can come back up here and say create sketch dimension as well. And then I can either set the length of that vertical line in the middle, or I can click on two individual points like this. And it's going to give me a dimension, a height that's going to be popping off of that. Here I can set, say, two inches. And now, finally, what we're seeing is a fully defined three lines. Everything is black. If I come in here, I can't drag it around. This gets us back here to the board where black is good, blue is bad. Right Now I'm feeling really good about this sketch being fully defined. One important thing that we don't have yet that is a new key term that I'm going to introduce is a profile. So we're going to come in here and we're going to add a profile to this list. And a profile is a completely enclosed area in here that is selectable to create a three-dimensional object. Right now, we just have three lines on a piece of paper. We really can't make that a 3D object from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add two more um, we're going to add two circles in here, and we're going to do this by just kind of clicking on circle up there, and I'm going to click and drag in two circles just kind of arbitrarily. We're going to do this so that we have to work on our constraints in the background, add a couple more constraints. Practice makes us perfect, right? So now that I've drawn in two circles, one important thing you can see here is that inside those circles, they're blue, they're highlighted blue, and if, you, if I hover over them, you can see that I'm sele they're selectable. Selectable here and selectable there. The enclosure of those circles is a profile, and that's actually what we're looking for. So with this, if I wanted to make, say, a bar with two circles on the end of it, I can start making this out with those three lines that we already have. Now, I drew these circles in here where they're not defined to anything. So we're going to introduce a new constraint, and that is tangent. Now, tangent is a little bit more of a complicated, maybe, constraint that people don't really often use. So I'm going to kind of draw it on the board on how it works, and then we'll kind of demonstrate it a little bit here in the CAD. If I have a circle, a tangent line to that circle would be a line that just barely kisses that surface. It makes a point of contact singularly in one little area here. So I can have lines that are tangent in all sorts of different directions. This line is tangent to the circle, so is this line, so is this line, because it's making a single point of contact here. Or at least imagine it, my drawing, right? This is only as good as me right now. But in CAD here, it'll be a perfect tangent point where there'll be a singular point. So let's do that, go ahead and pop back in here to CAD to demonstrate that. So. One, we're going to go to constraints, we're going to come down here to tangent, and I want this circle to be tangent with this line. So you see the circle moves down, um, and I can still select this circle, and I can move it left and right. And what you can see here is as I move it left, where that line transfers over it, you can see that that line is perfectly touching the top of it. But I can move it anywhere I want, so I need another constraint to dictate where that circle is going to be. So we're going to use coincident, and we're going to click on I want my circle, and I want my point in space to be touching. So back to our board. I'm going to describe a little bit what's happening here. I'm going to take this line, and I'm going to say that the end of that line happens to be that same exact point in space where the line and the circle are touching, that tangent point. Now. I can't move my circle this way or this way because it has to roll around that point now. So it kind of fixes it left or right. When I come back to the computer here, <coughs> sorry, we're going to end up having it so that I can expand the circle out or in, but I can no longer move it right or left. So one more constraint here should do it where I can say that I want the point down here in this circle to be fixed in space. Now. I have a fully defined circle on the right side of our part, and this allows us to now have an enclosed area to the left of it dictated by the other three lines. So I see I have these. I can also hold Control, or I can hold Shift, sorry. So if I hold Shift, I can select both of these profiles, and you can see that I'm building out something that is now extrudable. This is something we can start turning into that 3D object as we 
grow into our, our sketches and we start moving into the more complex stuff. What ends up happening is on the left side here, we have that cellar circle. And if we kind of drop the circle in here, I can do the same exact thing where I go tangent and tangent and, and we, we kind of expand that circle out. Or what I can do is that since we have this line that's already in the middle here, I can use one more tool that we haven't really talked about yet, which is a mirror tool. And that mirror tool is a very, very powerful thing that it's in Sketch, it's also in Extrude, that makes it so that if I have a line and I have a circle, if I want to mirror that circle across this line, I get a perfect duplication of it on the other side of that line. And we can do that exact same thing here. And that's going to be underneath Create, and you're going to come down to Mirror, and all I have to do is select, you're going to get a little drop down box here, so I'll bring this back a little bit closer. We're going to select the object that we want to mirror, so we're going to select the circle, and so we have one selected object, and we're going to select the line in which we want to mirror it, which is this midpoint. When I select that, you can see a secondary faint object pop up. If everything looks great, click OK. We get this perfect, perfect duplication. Now, one big test that we have at the end of this lesson as we're kind of building out these constraints is that if we change dimensions on anything else, does all of the objects change with it? And so we can go ahead and double click on certain things like this height. If we change this to say three inches, our circles are gonna transfer with it. Right, so now our circles become larger, they stay tangent, everything stays connected, nothing breaks. We can also change this length. We had two plus two, maybe we want it to be four plus four. There we go. So now we have eight inches from center to center on our circles, everything is expanding. We now have built our first robust solid sketch that we can start building things off of. This is how every single sketch should be before you start doing your extrusions. All right, so that's it for this lesson. We built our first robust drawing. In the next lesson, we're gonna build the first part of our chapter one series where we're gonna build this washer with these three key dimensions into it. We're gonna do that using these constraints and dimensions that we already did here. So we'll see you on the next one.